So, you all know how to properly RP troll in WoW, or as I like to call it, troll playing. Hello, I'm Stormigan, a self-proclaimed RP champion. But all joking aside, I'm a very experienced role player. I've done every conceivable RP in WoW, and I'm quite good at it. Therefore, you can trust that I know what I'm talking about. But wait, isn't RP trolling just running around, saying random stuff, and just acting like a complete fool? That's how the amateurs troll play, but not me, and definitely not you. Our noble objective as troll players is to cause the most amount of havoc without getting caught. Or if you do get caught, the RP is too crippled and messed up to do anything about it. The first step in a good RP trolling is acquiring power and influence. Wait, why in Azeroth is power important for RP trolling? That's troll playing to you, Denis. And yes, power is important for two reasons. The first one being that the more power you have, the more damage you can cause. And two, and this is important, if you have more authority, you are far less likely to be kicked by the raid leader. Let me give you an example. Let's pretend we want to do some trolling, but you take on the role of a stripper. And to troll, you run into the middle of a hostage situation, take all your clothes off and start dancing. The raid leader is going to kick you right away. On the other hand, if you are playing the role of a guard, a person with more status, and you decide you want to arrest everyone in town for stupid reasons, you would probably only get a scolding from your commanding officer. Imagine what you could get away with as the captain of the guard. Now you understand why having authority is useful, but how do we go about getting the sort of power that I speak of? Well, I have a few tips for doing that. The best time to secure yourself power is in the pre-RP because this is when you can get the most influence in the shortest amount of time. The pre-RP is what determines how much authority you start with and is integral to the rest of the roleplay. First off, let people know what role you're trying to get. Be obvious. If you want to be the innkeeper, then say things like, When I'm the innkeeper, I'm going to do blah blah blah. Well, how is that gonna help? Because anyone else who was on the fence about running for innkeeper is now discouraged. Now they know that they're going to have to compete with someone for the role of innkeeper, and no one wants to do that, so they will typically just choose a different role and leave you with that position by default. Okay, fine. That's useful. But what if I actually do have to compete for my role? What do I do then? In the event that you do have to compete for your role, there are several things you can do that have been proven to work. One of your options is to observe the raid leader and see what they want. If you're trying to become the king, then watch your raid leader or even ask them, do they want a fair king or an insane king? And when you know their preference, you can write your auditionatory essay how they want it. Tell them exactly what they want to hear, and then just drop it all once you get the role and do whatever you want. Also, a surprisingly effective method is to bribe them. I learned the hard way that 10 gold can be the difference between innkeeper and waitress. Now, my final tip for this step is, hide your true colors during the pre-RP. Don't troll and be ridiculous before the roles are given, or the raid leader will be suspicious about handing out such an important role to such a silly person. Like, socialize with your fellow RPers and get them to like you, and maybe get the raid leader to like you, but don't draw too much attention, or they won't want to give you the role. We have finally arrived at step two. Yay! Don't get too excited, Dini. Step two is about making friends, not really your specialty. Step two in a proper troll play is about getting followers, supporters, allies, anything of that nature. But I'm a strong, independent woman who don't need no friends. To the contrary, accomplices are incredibly useful, and I'll tell you why. If you are trolling, and other players see that you're being backed up by other players, they are way more likely to take you seriously. Also, you can send them on missions, similar to your garrison followers. Then they can help you carry out your plan while you're busy doing other things and you can get more done. How can I get allies during RPs? There are two things you can do. The easier of them is to bring your friends. Let your guildies know that you're gonna join an RP, and then you've got a bunch of like-minded people that you're friends with, and you can conspire with them. The second option is getting complete strangers in your RP group to follow you and do what you say. It's a more difficult option, but I have a saying. The mark of a good troll is the ability to get a group of strangers to troll for you without even realizing it. The first one, and one of my favorites, is seduction. 
and it doesn't necessarily have to involve ERP, although it is fun. Actually though, the title should probably be changed to Making Powerful Friends, because that's really what you're doing. You can use seduction to make those powerful friends, but it doesn't have to involve any sort of ERP or anything. But how could this be useful when you're trying to control unfamiliar people in an RP? Well, this happened to me once. Imagine that you are the waitress of the inn, and some lady comes in and discovers that you are illegally selling weed, and you need to get her arrested. So you make friends with the guards, someone who's more powerful than you, and you get their trust, and then you use this friendship that you've built, and you tell them this fake story about how they did something illegal, and then that guard goes and arrests the person that discovered your secret. So you're using that friendship with that person of higher authority to control them and therefore control others during the roleplay. The next way is the easiest, and in my opinion, least effective. I call it default command. It's where you're in a high position, such as captain of the guard or king, and you are automatically able to command the other guards, and they are obligated to follow you, but it isn't true loyalty. They only do what you're telling them to because their role demands that they do, but they don't truly want to follow you. Therefore, you can't count on them to do anything extravagant for you, but they can still be tricked into trolling. However, they might not comply with extreme orders outside their comfort zone. The next way, and my favorite way, is getting people to WANT to serve you, even though their role doesn't require it. My favorite way to do this is forming cults or militias, but particularly cults. Everyone loves being part of a good cult, or even a bad one. Random people will do the most absurd things for you, and it's marvelous for manipulators like us. Although cults aren't the only way to do this. You just have to find a common cause between you and the other player, and form an alliance of sorts. You can do this with the innkeeper staff, the guards, or even the rebels per se. For example, let's say that we're really angry at the king for taxing us unfairly. We could go to the other townspeople, rile them up and get them angry about it as well, and then we could cause them to revolt and storm the king's castle under our command. So you've gotten all these townspeople who aren't obligated to follow us, and now we're all of a sudden their leader and they're helping us to troll without even knowing it. But with this method, you have to be clever. You have to come up with a common cause for you and the separate party. You have to make them feel like they have something to gain out of your agreement, when in reality, we're just using them to further our own plans. For the final and most exciting step of all, making your move. This is where the actual trolling begins. Whether it be kidnapping the queen, arresting everyone in town for petty offenses, or starting a spontaneous slave auction, we are well prepared and we have been legitimized by player support. It is time to cripple the RP and have a hell of a good time doing it. There isn't much specific advice that I can give on this subject because it's heavily dependent on what role you are and what you plan to do. But what I can tell you is this. It depends on what RP you're doing, but typically you have to hit them hard and fast. You have to make your main move all at once, whether that's kidnapping the queen or assassinating the king, you have to do it all at once and not give them any time to react, so as to create as much confusion and disorder as possible. Now if you're doing an RP that's more laid back, like a family RP and you're still trolling, you don't have to be as strategic because they aren't as serious as, say, a Gilneas RP. Another piece of advice I can give you is not to make it too obvious in the beginning that you're a troll. As the king, don't just make a law that's outlawing clothing, or if you're the innkeeper, don't just order your waitresses to poison the ale as soon as the RP starts, or they won't do it. You need to make sure you slowly turn up the heat. If you throw a frog in a pot of scalding hot water, it will jump right out. But if you put it in room temperature water and slowly turn up the heat to a boiling temperature, the frog won't notice the difference until it's too late and its organs have melted inside it. And that concludes my advice on how to properly RP troll. Except for one last thing. Have fun with it. That's why we do it. We do this to have fun. I may have made it seem kind of intense and difficult, but the most important thing is is to have a good time. So see ya, good luck, and good troll playing.